Hi folks, tool 85 on our Okuma MB4000 horizontal is a tool that uses through spindle coolant. The problem we have is if another program that we also run on this MB4000 uses tool 85, and let's say something happens and I have to replace it with a tool that's not through spindle coolant, we have to know what other Fusion 360 programs that might run on this machine. It's an automated machine. It has a pallet pool with up to 25, 30 programs that could run overnight. Which programs uses which tools and how do we know to at least manually go in and update them? This video is gonna talk about how we're solving that. We'll break it up into three sections. The first is this section. We're gonna talk a little bit about what this problem is. The second section, we're gonna talk about the solution that we came up with and hopefully how it can help you. In the third section, we'll talk a little bit about custom programming, what we've done, how it's helped us, and what is a new resource called ChatGPT, which although seemingly unrelated to CNC machining, uh, is probably going to change all of our lives pretty significantly. So again, this problem is, as much as I love Fusion 360 and so many things about it, the tool library is not a library. It's like a yard sale. Basically, you can have master libraries and we've created master libraries, but you don't quote unquote check a tool out because checking a tool out implies there, there exists into perpetuity a relationship between the, that tool and the master library. It doesn't, it just copies or duplicates the tool into your individual Fusion file. And where this really falls short on is we have 218 tool matrix in our Okuma and we have literally dozens if not hundreds of different programs that can be run on an automated six pallet pool machine and so the through spindle coolant is a great example but so are updating speeds and feeds or the stick out of a tool or the gauge link or the holder uh, long term i do think uh, if you, we need to push push Autodesk and the Fusion team to implement, I think they call it linked libraries, where we could have a master library for a, a specific machine or a shop, et cetera, where tool 85 never really exists in a part file, but rather it exists only at this parent library, which means, hey, if we want to change the surface speed or the feed rate, uh, we have the ability to change it everywhere. I really look forward to that day, but the reality is I don't have that today, and this is creating a problem. It's actually caused some minor uh, goofs where we've rubbed collet holders on parts because we changed the stick out, and we just didn't know. Uh, there was no way to know other than some arcane tribal knowledge or attempting futilely to try to keep manual duplicate spreadsheets or lists of what tools go where. But I love the way we've solved this. I think it's a pretty elegant and s simple solution for the time being. And the way we're doing it is every file that we run on the horizontal, we're creating a Fusion 360 setup sheet. This, they make this very easy to do. And as soon as you create one, you have this HTML file that tells you a lot of really good information, including this section right here. And when I saw this, this is what helped trigger the light bulbs to go off. I thought, hey, there's, you know, there is a way to access the information I want because I know this part or this program uses this list of tools. The next steps were going to be either Upwork or Alex. Alex is one of our employees here. He took a stab at it and was able to figure it out with a Python script. We'll share this code. I'm not going to go into super detail about what it does other than to say, again, we are not Python developers, software developers, code writers, but we've had a lot of luck figuring out what we need to figure out. And we've also tried to really comment this through uh, pr pretty well for the folks out there that are going to build off of this. The first section does some Python module stuff. And here we're finding a directory where we're storing those HTML setup sheets. Scroll down a little bit more, processing the master list, and then ultimately scroll down. Um, the end is really the major set of code of, of where we're going through, and I call it scraping or parsing, but basically we're looking through those setup sheets to start building out this array or this database or this list, whatever you wanna call it, of, hey, what are these tool numbers and what file are they associated with? So let's run the script. But first, a quick point of clarification. This code is about 200 lines long. Of those 200 lines, Alex wrote very few of them. We're relying on existing Python modules uh, or examples we find online to help put this together. Specifically, the beautiful soup module that parses through HTML files, Google's own API documentation to help interact with Google Sheets, and an XLS writer module that helps us take the array data that we find when we parse the HTML and get it converted into a Google Sheets. I've got this Google Sheet open and you'll notice right now it is totally blank and let's run the file. 
So while it's running, it does take a minute, but the other reason I really like this solution is that it doesn't rely on us to have to open Fusion 360, open each file or tie up a license or otherwise just bog down that. And I like the fact that if I want to update it, it's as simple as whatever setup sheet we've either added or changed, and then we can simply rerun it. And so you saw what it was doing in the background, and this is awesome. Tool number 13 is used on this file and that file. Tool 35 gets used across four different files. Uh, and writing this code and getting, Alex was explaining, to get it to do what we wanted, the only thing that was next level difficulty was the fact that we wanted it to find tool 35 and for every instance of tool 35, we wanted it to kind of index across each column um, and Sheets or Excel use, use uh, numeric, or use alpha values like BCD. We had to kind of convert that to column two, three, four behind the scenes, but that's what I like about this. I now know if I'm gonna make a change to tool 35, speeds and feeds, stick out, holder, coolant style, these are the other four files. I need to be conscious of whether we need to make a change to that. We'll have links in the description for the resources around this, as well as a link to the Python Quick Start, which if you're gonna tackle this, uh, I would recommend reading through it. But if you're not up for this, two other solutions that come to mind. Number one is Upwork. We are not coders, and we've oftentimes used Upwork to help us either figure out things we can't figure out or just hand off projects altogether. There are probably other solutions out there similar to Upwork, but it gives you the ability to find code uh, programmers pretty quickly and get stuff done. The other thing, um, and this is borderline tangential, but it's not. Uh, it's one of the few things I've seen in my life, period, that is going to change the world. And it's called ChatGPT. It started to take over the news, and honestly, by the time this video is out, it may be even more prolific, um, but it is mind-blowing. ChatGPT is the first instance of artificial intelligence that I've seen um, that is just absolutely mind-blowing. And as an, as an example, while we're live on video, I'm gonna give two different, totally different examples. One, I'll say, write a love letter to my wife. Now, before you stop watching this video because you're watching a CNC machining channel, sit tight, this is mind blowing. It is writing a love letter to my wife and it will continue on. For the sake of time, I'll start a new chat here. Next, you can do something even more interesting. Write a tell me a riddle, riddle about a horse. Continue on. One more example before I get to the more relevant example. Write a short, write a sample G code program for a robo drill. This is all happening real time on a free account. Uh, this is truly, I think a lot about this as a parent, it's going to change the lives for us and certainly for the next generation. Look what it's doing right here. This is unbelievable. And finally, mostly relevant to the explicit purpose of this video was I'm not a programmer, but let's say I wanna start trying to tackle something in programming, write a Python script to change the word green to black, making this an example totally, but you get the point in the power of what this represents. Not only is it writing the code, it's actually commenting it in layman's terms to help you or me improve it and understand what's going on. If, like me, you're prone to going down Wikipedia-type rabbit holes, definitely do some research. There's plenty of other content on YouTube and, and the internet talking about what ChatGPT is. It's not perfect. It, uh, there are plenty of examples already of where it's doing things uh, or telling you things that are not necessarily totally true. So I'm not here to represent that it's by any means a perfect solution, but uh, what it represents is uh, truly revolutionary in my humble opinion and hopefully can serve as a tool to help you guys just like I hope this Python script that we figured out can help you guys better manage and avoid crashing your CNC machine because ultimately that's what started this. We actually did have a tool break. It was a through spindle coolant drill. I only had a non through spindle coolant version handy 
And it really scared me to think that one of the programs that was going to run that night could actually turn the through spindle coolant pump on and attempt to push coolant at 1,000 PSI through a drill that doesn't have those holes uh, and could potentially ruin a spindle. Uh, and that's a significant, you know, mid five figure damage and repair. And it's totally unnecessary in this day and age uh, with advanced manufacturing, automation, all those buzzwords that as folks who follow the channel know that I kind of like to joke about sometimes, but this is really stuff that matters. So as always folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed, take care, see you soon.